If you're a fan of CBC Podcasts, the name Connie Walker will be familiar to you. Connie is the award-winning host and journalist behind Missing and Murdered, Finding Cleo, released back in 2018. Since then, podcasting with Gimlet Media and Spotify has become her full-time job. The Cree journalist is from the Okanese First Nation, about an hour east of Regina. And next week, season two of her series, Stolen, will debut. And it has a personal connection to her history. Connie joins me now from Toronto to talk about it. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So tell me how this story came to light in the first place. Well, it was actually last May after the terrible discovery at the Kamloops Indian Residential School in BC. Um, you know, it seemed like a lot of survivors started coming forward and, and sharing their stories about what they endured in residential school, many of them for the first time. And it was around that time my brother Hal shared a story about our father, our late father, Howard Cameron, that I had never heard before. And it was about um, how when our dad was in the RCMP in the late 1970s, he was on patrol in rural Saskatchewan and he pulled over a vehicle that was swerving on the highway uh, because he suspected the driver was drinking. And when he got to the driver's side window, he recognized the driver as a priest who had abused him at residential school. And my dad shared this story with my brother um, that he beat up the priest that night on the side of the road uh, and then expected to, you know, for there to be a complaint or to get into trouble or to, you know, maybe even lose his job. But nothing happened. And it ended up becoming this story that, that he told my brother that I just heard last year for the first time. And when I heard that story about my dad, it made me realize how little I knew about his experience at residential school. And how little I knew about what he had endured there at that school and how it impacted him and also how it impacted me in my life. And it made me want to learn more about his experience and to also see if I could try to find the priest who he pulled over that night. You have covered so much on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, residential schools, the TRC. What made you want to research this and then share it publicly? Yeah, I think that all of my journalism, um, you know, I guess for the last several years, at, at least, I've been able to focus on Indigenous stories and families and, and our communities. And, and that's been fulfilling for me professionally, but also personally. I feel like every story that I've done uh, w with another family who, with a family who's lost someone, or every story that I've done to try to help people understand things like the 60 scoop or the impacts of residential school, I've also found that I've been learning about myself in those stories as well and, and really connecting the dots back to, you know, my own family and what we experienced. Um, but in spite of all of that in-depth reporting on other people's lives, like I, I really felt like there were gaps missing in my own understanding of my family's history and how we have been impacted by uh, residential schools and, and colonization. And and I think that, you know, for, for me, it just really felt like the, the right time professionally and personally for me to to take on a story like this. And, and it has been such a transformative experience for me um, as a daughter, you know, to feel like I'm getting to know my dad in, in a new way through this podcast and getting to better understand him and understand why our relationship was the way it was. And also professionally, you know, helping to feel like I'm bringing people along and creating space for these really important stories and helping people learn the truth about what Indigenous families in Saskatchewan and Canada have, have experienced, uh, you know, because of residential schools. What was it like coming home to Saskatchewan to do this story? How was it different from previous visits to just visit family? I mean, I always love coming home. I, you know, I have lived away from Saskatchewan for over 20 years now, but it always feels like home. And I come home a lot, you know, I'm very close to my family on Okanese, but my dad's family is on Beardies. And so it, it has been honestly amazing to get to reconnect with them and get to, to, to visit with them for an extended period. And, and, you know, anytime you come home, it's never long enough, right? You know, there's always people that you didn't get to see this time that you wish you could have spent more time with, that, you know, something else you wish you could have done. And, and to have this dedicated time uh, that I could spend with my family really honestly felt like a gift because in all of the conversations that, that we had, you know, we were visiting and sharing and talking and laughing and sometimes crying, but also, you know, it, it just, it felt like, it felt like 
I could feel the generosity in everything that they were sharing with me and how, you know, incredibly open they were and generous with me about their own stories, but also my dad really has meant so much to me. So where did your research take you in the province? Where did you go? Yeah, I spent most of my time in the Beardies and Okamasis First Nation. Um, that's where my dad was from, and that's where he and all 15 of his siblings lived. And they all attended the St. Michael's Indian Residential School. So this podcast is really an in-depth look at this one residential school in Canada to not only learn about my dad's experience, that's where we start in the podcast, but you know, through our investigation into St. Michael's, you know, it was in operation for over 100 years in that community and in and the impacts in Beardies and Okamasis, but also surrounding First Nations has been so vast and and really to get a sense of that, um, you know, we talked to dozens of survivors uh, from Beardies, but also from surrounding uh, First Nations and, and really tried to get a sense of what life was like for the students in that school. You talked to a lot of survivors, but I'm curious who else do we hear from in this podcast? You know, it's it's it starts out to really kind of focus tightly focused on on me and my family, and that's you know I have a very large family. You know, my dad was one of 15 kids who who went to this residential school, and so getting to speak to all, a lot of my aunts and uncles, and then getting to talk to their classmates and their contemporaries who were with them in residential school. Um, but a big part of this podcast is also really you know I I was trying to find. Uh, the priest who who my dad pulled over that night, the priest who abused him at residential school. And, and I think also then exploring like, you know, the people who who were alleged abusers at residential school, um, you know, what happened to them, you know, and, and really trying to, um, to to uncover that part of the story as well and, and ask questions about justice and ask questions about accountability and ask questions about, uh, you know, wh- what, what options have have there been for survivors who are seeking that, who are seeking justice and who are seeking accountability? I don't want to spoil how the podcast works out, but what can you tell us about the search for that priest? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that there's so much that is unknown about that residential school, at least for, from me. Like, I didn't know when my dad went or for how long, and I didn't know you know, who the priests and nuns and staff members were at the school there. So um, one of the most important trips we took was to the provincial archives in Alberta, where the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, they run, they ran the St. Michael's Residential School for for most of uh, the time that it was open until the early 1970s. Um, And they, in 2018, handed over their archives to the provincial archives, to the provincial archives in Alberta. So we went there and it was like a time capsule of what went into the day-to-day running of this residential school. So along with like the attendance records um, where I found my dad's attendance records and I found his brothers and sisters attendance records, I found that, you know, my dad is actually the third generation in his family to go to that residential school on both sides. Like both of his parents went and all of their parents went. So, you know, this has had such a profound impact on our families and our communities. Um, but I also was able to find the names of all of the staff members and all of the the nuns who uh, priests and nuns who were at that school and find out which ones overlapped with my dad. And so uh, that then spurred another investigation, it, it, like uh, further our investigation into those priests and nuns and staff members and what happened to them. And when we were talking to, you know, um, other survivors, you know, I think that this, you know, this, this started as a story about my dad and the abuse that he endured at residential school. And what we're discovering is is that he was not the only one. You know, we've uncovered dozens of allegations of severe physical or sexual abuse by students or from uh, like of students at St. Michael's by uh, priests and nuns and other staff members there. And it's it's really it's been I think it's so important to know this history. I think it's so important to um, to shine a light on, on what kids endured at, at those schools. But also, I, I think that what we've uncovered is is horrifying and heartbreaking when you think of the fact that this was one school. That, you know, there were over 100 schools across Canada, and this was one school for a window of time. And, and that, honestly, is something that I'm still grappling with and still processing. Connie, I'm wondering, I just, something you said there really stuck with me, the time capsule of it. What was it like for you in that moment to see your dad's name 
to see your grandparents' names on those records, I imagine that was a moment. It's, you know, on one hand, it's so validating because you, you, you know, I think implicitly, like every Indigenous person uh, understands, like in some way, that we have been impacted by this history, that we have been impacted by that. But I think, you know, seeing my dad's name on a sheet of paper that he was six years old when he was sent to the St. Michael's Indian Residential School, that most of his brothers and sisters also went when they were that age. Like I, I have a daughter who's 10, like I, she hasn't stayed away from us for more than one or two nights in her whole life. Like it, it's just unimaginable to think of what it was like for my dad at six years old to be in that kind of an institution where the abuse seemed to be rampant and widespread. And, and I think that then when you realize that it wasn't just him and it wasn't just him and his brothers and sisters, but it was my Cookham and Musham and it was their parents as well. Like, I, you know, the weight of that is something that honestly, I'm still trying to, to process and, and manage. And, and for me as a journalist, you know, I, I think that what, what I have found to be helpful has been to shine a light, to, has been to like expose things, to, to create space for people to not only to talk about these, you know, exactly what happened and, and, what's, and what's continuing to happen, but to create space for people to have empathy for the children that my, my you know, that were at that school, like my dad and his brothers and sisters, like people who I, you know, I know and love and, and that, you know, I'm, 42 years old and I'm just learning this history in my own family. Uh, it, it, it's, it's also, I think, partly for me, you know, kind of infuriating that, that that's the case, that, that I am this age, that I have been a journalist for 20 years and that this is, this is the first time I'm, I'm uncovering, uh, you know, how this legacy has impacted me and my family and my community. And, and that, you know, is, it's a sobering realization. Connie, thank you so much for your work on this and for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Podcast host and journalist Connie Walker joining us from Toronto. Stolen Season 2, Surviving St. Michael's comes out on Tuesday, May 17th on Spotify.